You've heard of the DPI and the SPI. You know that DPI stands for District Performance Index, and SPI stands for School Performance Index. But what do they really mean? And how were they calculated? This brief presentation will help you learn more about Connecticut's Performance Index. In a nutshell, the DPI and the SPI are aggregate measures of student achievement. They tell us how well students are doing academically in a given school year. The simplest way to think of the DPI or SPI is that it's the average score of students in a subject area, whether it's English language arts, mathematics, or science. Remember, to get an average score, you add up the scores of all the students and then divide by the number of students. Students take different tests in different grades. The DPI-SPI combines all test scores in a subject into a single performance index score. For example, in a K-12 district, scores from the Smarter Balanced Assessments for students in grades 3 through 8, the Connecticut SAT School Day for students in grade 11, and the Connecticut Alternate Assessment for students with significant cognitive disabilities in grades 3 through 8 and 11 are all included to calculate the ELA or math DPI. But how do you calculate an average using scores from different tests? Don't these tests have different types of scores? Yes, different tests do have different scales for reporting their scores. The Smarter Balanced ELA scale range is different for each grade. The actual scores range from a low of around 2100 in third grade to a high of around 2800 in grade 8. The SAT ELA scale, on the other hand, ranges from 200 to 800, and the Connecticut Alternate Assessment Scale ranges from 1200 to 1290. You can't simply average these different scores to get a DPI. In order to be able to average scores across these different tests, we first need to map all scores onto a common scale. This is done by converting each student's score from a test, whether it's Smarter Balance Grade 3, Grade 4, or the SAT, onto a common scale that ranges from 0 to 110. The higher the student's score on the test, the closer their index point value will be to 110. Once all individual student scores for all tests are mapped in a similar fashion onto the 0 to 110 scale, then those index points can be averaged. To generate the DPI or the SPI, which in this example is 50.8. That seems clear, but now how do I make sense of the DPI or SPI? What's a good DPI or SPI? Based on our analyses, we've established that at a DPI or SPI of 75, students are on average performing solidly in the desired achievement level. So if the performance index for your district or school or student group is below 75, then it means that achievement needs to improve. The DPI or SPI is also a really good measure to use for tracking trends in achievement or for evaluating the size of achievement gaps between different groups of students. Having a measure of average performance across all grades and tests allows leaders at both the district and school levels to have a high level view of achievement in a subject. Another way to make sense of the DPI or SPI is to look at how your district or school compares to the statewide performance index or to other districts or schools in the state. The DPI and SPI are indicator one of Connecticut's next generation accountability system. 
Connecticut's DPI-SBI approach is evidence-based in a much more accurate method of reporting average achievement across grades and assessments. But what about the percentage of students at or above level three? Why doesn't Connecticut use that measure within its accountability system? When we focus solely on the percentage of students above the level three cut, districts and schools tend to focus their energies on students just below that cut score at the expense of all other students, including those well below the cut score and those above the cut score. Conversely, by incentivizing improvement of the average score, the district or school no longer has to select specific students to target in order to increase accountability points. All improvement achieved by all students counts toward the SPI DPI. Connecticut's performance index is an average score in a subject area. It's calculated by placing all test scores onto a common scale. The ultimate target for the performance index is 75. At an index of 75, students are, on average, performing solidly in the desired achievement level. The DPI-SPI is evidence-based and a much more accurate measure of student performance than looking at the percentage of students at or above level three. All improvement achieved by all students contributes to the DPI-SPI. Thank you for listening.